Welcome to another episode and today we have Alex Borch but don't take it as a mistake we are not in Gozo we are sadly in Malta maybe one day we'll be invited we never know yes, by all means. but we are super happy to have Alex with us and definitely he will give us some insights what's been happening with him for past few months Alex thank you for coming thank you for inviting me on your show um I, I'm impressed how much you've done the past uh, year, especially. Uh, I congratulate you in your endeavors. And as I said, thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely our pleasure. And actually, I shouldn't say uh, like per, per name. I think it's MP now. MP, how yeah. proud it sounds. It is, it is. But um, uh, I try to keep it as cool as possible. I try to keep my feet on the ground, um, stay close to people. Um, I don't let my role get up to my head. I try to keep my feet on the ground and stay grounded and keep my character as it was before being elected as a member of parliament because the way I think about it is that people elected me as Alex Borch whom they've known for their life. So the fact that I've become a member of parliament doesn't change my character, doesn't change how I tend to connect with people. I keep my own character and We'll see what happens with the future then. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But do you think it's possible to, to actually stay like that? Because I think with what you see normally, and I become a bit of a common knowledge, like kind of politics changes kind of everybody. Would you agree with that? Or you think you can remain yourself? I'm not saying it is, it's easy to stay as I was before. However, I'm going to try my best to keep my character, keep the way I was. I tend to be very vociferous about what I think. So if I have an idea, if I disagree with something, I always um, voice my concern. I always voice myself on social media or on television because I think that people want credible politicians. People want to relate to politicians. And to be credible, you need to be honest. And honesty brings with it credibility. So it's something that I believe in, um, being a credible politician, and I will try my best to keep, keep myself as is. Mm. So how long would you say was that part of your dream to be like the member of the parliament? Was that with you for like long years or? I've never thought I would be a member of parliament. I've always loved politics. I've always been um, in it. So at the background, but I've never thought I would be directly involved in politics and especially member of parliament and garnering that much votes. I've garnered 6,100 votes. But now that I'm in it, I think I've done the right choice because people now look at me as a relief, as their own shoulder. Whenever they have a concern, whenever they have a problem, whenever they want their voice to be heard, they come near me, show me their problem, and I voice myself in Parliament. Now I have the possibility to voice people's concerns in Parliament, to be a voice for the Godetans especially, and I'm trying my best to give them the best representation possible in Parliament. Mm. But the good thing about you is because I think you have that presence that you actually maybe don't even need to convince people too much, but you have that the caring part about yourself. Maybe it's the Gositan part. All Gositans are like that? Yes, Gositans care a lot huh? uh, for <laughs> themselves. Um, but I think it's innate in me. My father was like that as well when he was in politics. And I think it's how you've been grown up into. I've been grown up like that, um, caring about people and helping. I don't look at politics as a means to better myself. I look at politics as a means to better other people's lives. So when you look at politics in that way, I think you will be a, an exemplary politician. And I will try to be as much as possible like that, as using politics in order to help people um, better their life. Exactly. But within the years, uh, many countries, you always would hear like politics always needs the fresh blood, like the young people. And actually in Malta, you can see something happening. There are not only you, but there are a few other young ones. And I think that change is perfect to see, right? Yes, in fact, especially the, the Nationalist Party um, has changed a lot, has evolved during the last general election. Uh, we've seen many new faces being elected in Parliament, which is a sigh of relief. Because now we have a balanced nationalist party in parliament, we have experienced politicians and young, new, fresh, fresh faces, which can give a new breath of fresh air in parliament. So this balance, I think, complements our uh, vision, the nationalist party's vision for Malta, whereby we try to keep our values, but at the same time, we progress with time. We need to see what people's needs are at the moment and build 
a sustainable future for our generations. Beautifully put. Mm, would you say like one of your mission is to encourage people to like follow politics, know what is happening, and then even like encourage them to express their opinions? Yes, in fact, what I was impressed about mostly was that many young, um, uh, many youngsters, many youths, have looked up to myself now that I've been elected to parliament because no one would have said someone their age would be elected to parliament. But now that I've made it, many young uh, ambitious politicians now, uh, many young t teenagers who love politics, now are getting closer to the Nationalist Party because they've seen my progress and they think that they can also do it. And that thing by itself gives me more motivation to work and bring motivation to teenagers who want to get into politics but before used to find it difficult to become uh, politicians but now that they see more young politicians now it gives them motivation to keep on working harder to get into politics and that by itself is very healthy for our country because we always need young politicians with new fresh ideas, new mentality, in order for our country to progress. Yeah, that is fantastic. So, um, yeah, I cannot imagine how satisfying uh, it is for you. So, well done. Thank you. Thank you what would you say is the biggest thing you're working on at the moment? Well, at the moment, um, as can be seen through social media and the news outlets, um, I'm working on the security in Gozo. In Gozo, we have a problem now. Uh, it's been coming for over years. But now it's become to a point, it's, it's got to a point where people are scared to live in Gozo because the criminality has increased a lot in Gozo, uh, especially in certain uh, villages like mm -hmm. Marsalforn, Schlendi, Shat. But police presence is minimal. So at the moment I'm pushing a lot together with our uh, Shadow Minister for Internal Affairs, Joe Gilio. We're pushing for more police presence in Gozo. We're pushing for better conditions for policemen in order for more new police to be uh, recruited in the police force and hopefully with our voice we can make a bit of a difference in order for more police to be brought to Gozo. Other than that I'm also focusing on the health issue in Gozo. In Gozo we had a single hospital which was privatized, however we were given an idea that it was going to be a better hospital but there was no investment in, in the hospital so at the moment um, I'm also attending with Adrian Delia, who's opened the court case in order to um, check the contract which was between Vitals and the, the Maltese government. If the court um, decides that this was a vitiated contract, the contract will be um, stopped and we will be able to get back the hospital in Gozo to the government and give it to the people and give them the best service they can get. So I'm also working on that with Adrian Delia in order to try to make a bit, a bit of a difference. Wow. It looks wow. like you have a full hand. <laughs> I'm trying my best, I'm trying my best. So Look, uh, it's hard to imagine that, uh, that your ambition and the drive comes like from nothing. Who is like your the biggest role model? The biggest role model is my father. As I said, my father passed away three years and a half ago. Um, he was also in politics, but he did a different type of politics. He did it for the country, he did it for helping people. So I'm trying to do that, so that same sort of politics, where you try to keep yourself grounded, close to the people. I'm always around, I'm always going around to activities, to the local square, to the pubs, where I can meet people, because the best politics you can do is the politics you get from people. So people show you what the, the country needs whenever you're in the streets. That's the best politics you can get. You can't get politics from behind the desk. You need to see what people need. And you see what people need when you go out, when you meet them outside in their house. And then from what you get over there, you can formulate the best type of politics, the best strategy for the country. So yes, uh, my role model is my father and he motivates me to keep on going in my future endeavors. Mm, that sounds great. Thank you for sharing with us. Uh, how would you say, for example, that the challenging part when you have a home visit and then you have like a you know, supporter of the, like from the Labour Party? How, I, how do you deal with that? To be honest, even people from the opposing party respect me because the way I do politics isn't um, an extreme type of politics, isn't a negative politics. Uh, I try to keep a balanced politics. Balanced in the sense that I try to be critical, obviously. In, in op when we're on, in opposition, you have to criticize the government whenever it does something which, is, which goes against our ideas. However, 
I try to be critical in a constructive way, not just critical, not just saying that's wrong or that's bad. But whenever I say something's wrong, I also propose what I think would be better to be done. For example, I propose ideas. I propose uh, some form of alternative to what the government is, is proposing. And in that way, when you're not too critical, people respect you from both ends of the parties. So what I've seen a lot is that even Labour supporters have a lot of respect towards me because I've never been too critical, never been too negative. And when something is good, when something, when the Labour Party does something good for the country, I praise it because, it, because if it's good, it's good for the whole country. When something's wrong, I criticize it and say what's, what could have been done better. And when you try to use that form of politics, you will be respected from everyone. Very mm. good. Yeah. Nice approach. Yes, thank you. <laughs> that, that's easy, that the young people are perfect at, at those positions. Yeah, yeah. So being like a few months now as an MP and before you were already active, how difficult would you say is to make the change? It's very difficult, Sarah. Before, I used to have a lot of hobbies. I used to train at the gym, I used to play water polo, I used to go out more. And now I had to make a life change. It's, it's, when, when, I, when you put yourself in politics, it's a new chapter. It's, it, it's not just a new chapter, it's a new life. Because politics is a way of living. It's a whole new life where I've left everything. I've left the gym, I've left training. And I focused myself on politics in order to be able to make a difference, to leave an impact on our country. Obviously, in just... As some, in just some months, it's not possible to do the change. But I think gradually I will be able to leave a small impact on the country because I'm trying to do, as I told you, a different form of politics. A politics where you bring balance in, politi in politics and you try to be as close to the people as possible so that you will be able to voice their own concerns. So we'll see uh, what our future will hold, but I'm trying my best to leave an impact on our political arena. Mm. So being a few months in, in, in the parliament, would you say like your feedback is like what you expected or is totally different or how would you describe it's totally it? It's different because... Better different or? Better, yes, because I thought when I'm elected it will be a normal life but people will applaud you but will stop there. But I've been getting a lot of positive feedback. The way I'm doing politics, um, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback, even though I'm in opposition, because you have to also keep that in consideration. When you're in opposition, there isn't much you can do. It's the government who implements the policy. But from the opposition, I'm trying to make as much as possible difference as I can. Nowadays, social media plays an important role. I use social media a lot, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. And all these three social media platforms, um, they target different generations. For example, TikTok, they target the younger generation, the 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds. Instagram and Facebook, they target a different generation. There's a, a bigger generation gap from there. So I try to use the three of them in order to be able to also make a difference over there. For example, when there's a problem, I voice myself on social media and realistically, Sometimes, even through social media, I've been able to change some things. For example, whenever there was the issue of the police presence in Gozo, I voiced myself in, in, on Facebook and there was a change. For example, in Kamuna, um, two weeks ago, I voiced my concern that the police station in Kamuna, usually it's open 24-7 during the summer season. This year, from, for some reason, they've decided to open it from 9 a.m. till 8.30 p.m. I have put this issue on social media. A week after, the hours have changed and have been extended. So through social media, I've also been able to make a bit of a difference. So I'm trying to make as much as possible myself um, seen in the, in the political arena in order to be able to make a difference in, in our lives. Yes, perfect. I think you have a, one younger brother or two? Yes, one younger brother. One. Okay, yes. so you must be that role model for him then. Did he tell you already who he want to be when he grows up? Yes, he also loves politics. Um, I think he loves it more than me because he's been loving politics since he was very, very young. Yes, he looks up to me. He helps me a lot in my political life, obviously. He's still studying. He's studying law. But I think when he will graduate, I think he will also try to get okay. into politics because he <laughs> seems that he loves it. <laughs> okay, so you see that, that effect of yours that things are possible uh, yeah, it's contagious. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> How your mom reacted to all this? 
at first she was a bit skeptical about me going into politics, but uh, nowadays she supports me a lot. She's giving me her full support. And um, obviously her help is much needed because the mother figure is very important, um, especially in politics. And obviously she's giving me her full support. So it's needed and I appreciate what he's doing for both me and my brother. Maybe the most important. One dream came true for you. What is the, the, the bigger picture in a couple of years from now? Well, uh, we'll see what the future holds. Uh, I've, I never close doors to any opportunities. If there are opportunities in the future, I won't mind taking them, if it's for the better good of the country. Uh, this I'll take a step at a time, and when other opportunities come, we'll see how we're up. we are on in that time. But for the moment, I focus myself in Gozo, I focus myself on what the Godzidans need, and then what the future holds, uh, we'll see. And if an opportunity comes, Maybe we'll take it as well. Perfect. We like to see your energy. We will definitely follow for more. Thank, Thank you, you for much. spending some time with us. Thank you for having me on your show as well. Thank you very much.